I'd um, ask uh, Director Chopra, thank you for uh, hanging in there. And um, we will go first to the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. Nunn, for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Director <laughs> Chopra, for hanging through. It's a marathon today, uh, but it's important for all of us to be able to go through this. I want to follow up on a number of items that were brought up from some local bankers in my community in Iowa. Um, there are many folks in the Midwest who are trying to do the best they can to keep up with what seems like a really ever-changing regulatory environment. And it puts both the economic burden on them, as well as just a challenge to be able to support the customers and communities that I exist in. Um, some of the words that they have described to me in their dealings with your agency have been that the guidance is unclear, it is not always concise, in fact, sometimes it's conflicting. Some have called it partisan, and others have said that it's analytically weak. So to get us all on the same page here, I would like to just go over what the CFPB has that's unique to your organization that's different from a lot of others. First among here, let's be clear, you are not under the Appropriations Clause, correct? Um, the Appropriations Clause? Yeah, so you're funded by the Fed, not directly through any appropriations. So the Appropriations Clause is in the Constitution. That, that question is- Right, and you're not under it, correct? Right now. Yeah. Second, you don't have an independent Inspector General, do you? Our Inspector General is with the Federal Reserve. They, they do both of them. There's, well, they oversee the Federal Reserve, but you, you don't report to the Inspector General. They oversee the entire aspect of it. Do you have an executive board? No. Okay. I find the collection of those three things concerning, and that's an issue for Dodd-Frank that we can take up as we go forward. Now, when you and I last spoke, we came on the heels of roughly a quarter of a million Americans who had their data hemorrhaged by CFPB. I'm hopeful that when we spoke in June, we were gonna get a written after action report on this. Has your office had the time to review this and provide any kind of written after action on what happened with that leak? So uh, again, the misappropriation theft of data by an insider threat was completely serious. We are continuing to cooperate with all law enforcement related to that, including any criminal law enforcement. With respect to changes we have made, we're happy to- I'm asking, you. Director, if you have provided a report to Congress on exactly what happened. Well, we've complied with all of the pieces of it. If there's specific questions about what happened- I want to make sure this doesn't happen again. I do so too. Here's and my I ask. Please provide us a written after action on what occurred so we don't have this again. Thank you. Um, I want to turn now to Section 1071. I know it's been part of an ongoing conversation today, um, and you are statutorily obligated under Dodd-Frank to collect uh, a number of data points. In fact, as I understand it, it is now swollen to 81. Uh, you, in fact, you've exceeded your mandate by about 25 points. Sorry, just to be clear, that's not accurate. Okay, please describe to me where so I'm there, there are 81 data fields. So I'm just going to give an example, but the, which is not in the rule, but it helps. I, I think that you, but, we can equivocate over how you want to call it. There if, are 81 different items that members who want to uh, review this would have to fill out. Is that correct? So again, I'm trying to explain that. There are not 81 different items. We create a template for how people can report. So if you have a first name, a middle name, a last name, and a suffix, in order for the data to be cleanly understood, that might count as five. So again, we so look- So a total at of 81 different fields that need to be filled out. I'm gonna follow up on this because again, you went above and beyond the requirement here by 25 additional uh, requests here. I wanna understand how this information is gonna be used. Let's be very clear here. Is this information gonna be publicly available? So there's not going to be personally identifiable information. We're going Will to any of the information be publicly available? If you'll let me finish. We're gonna go through a process pursuant just like exists in mortgage data to figure out what type Director, of summer. Are you going to provide this information publicly or is it gonna say internal to the CFPB? As I just shared, just like the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act data, there will be certain analyses and data that will be made public. That is years away. I believe it's the intent of the CFPB right now to potentially publicly shame a number of organizations, including my bank in Union State Bank in East Peru, Iowa. It's got 15 employees. 
population of 200 citizens, and they have a very different profile than what may be in a place like Pittsburgh. But East Peru for them, if they don't meet the standards that you've laid out here in you know, your diversity and inclusion, there's a real chance here that they could be publicly no, shamed. No, that, that's not true. But the, the data will be used for Community Reinvestment Act. That is already, we're not going to be duplicative data, but I'm out of time, but I'm happy to take that question. Gentlemen, I want to add this time one. has expired. 